Now, if there's one tool that I could pick and bring with me on my creative photo editing journey, it would be a pen tablet or a pen display. Now, I've been using pen tablets for quite a while now. I actually started out just using the trackpad of my mini 11 inch MacBook Air from 2012. And soon I wanted to figure out and explore what I could do and how I could improve my workflow with a pen tablet. Now, at the end of this video, I will show you exactly how I integrate a pen tablet or a pen display in my current workflow but first things first recently i did a photo editing challenge and i contacted huion if they wanted to provide the prize for the winner and they agreed on that and as well they sent me out a brand new pen tablet or pen display i should say for me to try and test out and that is the huion canvas 13. Now, what is the difference between a pen tablet and a pen display? It is very simple. A pen tablet is just a surface to draw on and you look at your screen and a pen display is actually a display built into the tablet. So you're actually drawing on your screen. Now, the thing is, they are a little more expensive because obviously there's more technology into it. But in this video, I'm going to talk you all about it. If it's worth it for you to get a pen display. Now, the one that I have is the Canvas 13 and it comes in in three different colors the cosmo black the violet purple and the midnight green the resolution of this tablet is 1920 by 1080 and it is equipped with full lamination technology and an anti-glare screen protector so it is less reflective but also the full lamination technology decreases the parallax which is basically the distance from your pen tip to your screen which makes it more accurate to work with it is a very thin design almost 12 millimeters thick and it only weighs about one kilogram which makes it very very portable on the left side of the tablet you will find the expression keys as well as on the pen which you can fully customize and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit so the canvas 13 comes with a 3-in-1 cable by default one outlet for the HDMI one for the power and one for the basic functions basically but you can also get a separate USB-C cable which I don't have but if your device is compatible you could run the pen display off of just one cable a little bit about the pen it is battery free so you never ever have to charge it which is a big huge difference compared to the first tablet that i had which i had to charge all the time this pen has got like 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity which basically means it is very sensitive so you can make thick lines if you press harder and thinner lines if you uh, press softer basically and it also supports angle tilt support so if you're sketching you usually have your pencil at an angle and this also works with this digital pen now it is a pen display but you can also use it as a pen tablet by simply unplugging the hdmi another great thing for left-handed artists is that you can simply flip around the tablet and and you can change the settings inside of the driver and you can actually make it functional as a left hand tablet one important thing for me to mention is that it isn't a, a standalone device so you really need to plug it in either your laptop your computer or compatible android phones but it doesn't work by itself so it doesn't have any memory it just has to run off a power source which in my case is my uh, macbook m2 pro now to set this thing up is fairly easy on a mac so you go to your settings you go to display and you will find your pen display right here if you click on it you can set the resolution of the screen and you can set the how you want to use the screen so you can set it as your main display you can turn it into an extended display and you can actually mirror your uh, laptop or computer or the device that you're plugged into now with this button you can arrange things so if you're a left-handed user and you want your pen tablet or pen display on the left hand side you can simply click and drag this thing to the left hand side and what this basically does is if you go with your mouse to the bottom left of your normal screen so off your laptop or off your computer you will actually go into the pen display so once you've set this up you can actually download the driver from their website and this is what the driver looks like it is very simple now if you go to pen display and to press key you can actually assign your expression keys and these you can assign to a whole lot of things so if I click on it, you can actually see that I can assign it to a keyboard key, a mouse key, a switch to run a program, to run system applications, multimedia, precision mode, pen and scroll, quick menu, and fixed pressure sensitivity. Um, yeah, usually I do. I just do a keyboard key. Um, so for instance, B for the brush or left bracket key to make my brush 
much smaller. Um, for this case, I can go to switch and set it to brush eraser so that it toggles between my brush and eraser. Um, but as you can see, you can uh, assign many, many keys. So I've got this set up, a brush eraser at the top, then right bracket key and left bracket key to adjust the size of my brush. Then I've got the zoom in and the zoom out key. Then I've got space bar, which lets me pan around my canvas in Affinity Photo. L is for the lasso tool. And then I got command C, which is the undo button. Then you can set up your working area so you can either make your pen work on your main screen or on the tablet. But of course, I would recommend it to set it to the tablet because it is a screen. And you can also rotate your uh, pen tablet basically. So if you want the uh, working area to be different because you actually change the rotation of your um, display right here. So you can change the rotation to 90 degrees, 180 degrees and 270 degrees. You can change the settings here as well to make them match the orientation of your tablet then we got the digital pen and as mentioned we've got two buttons at the top right here so the lower button and the top button honestly i don't really use these buttons and also i personally don't really use these expression keys simply because i'm so used to working with keyboard shortcuts but i might actually try to adjust to using these expression keys because i think they could really improve my workflow so then we got the pressure settings right here and here you can see how this pen actually works. The softer you touch, the thinner the line is and the harder you touch, the more firm the line is basically. You can set it here. So if you set it too hard, you have to press really hard to actually get to the thickest version of your line basically. And if you set it to really soft, you, it is very, very sensitive, way too sensitive in my opinion. But some of you might actually like that. Now let me actually show you how I would use this uh, pen display in my case. What I just mentioned is usually I use my keyboard shortcuts in combination with the pen tablet. So I don't really use these expression keys because yeah, it's just not my kind of workflow. And let's say we want to put this model on a different background. Now, a great way of using this thing is for pen, the pen tool, because I don't know, it just works so much smoother and so much nicer when I'm actually working on a graphic tablet. So whenever I'm going to use the pen tool, I'll take my graphic tablet out. Now, this is going to be quite a cool tutorial for you guys, because yeah, many of you have been act actually asking me like how to combine selection tools, because we're dealing with hair now, but we're also dealing with clothes. So how can we actually make the best out of both tools? And my recommendation is always to combine tools. But this is actually something that you yeah, obviously has to have to know first before you can apply it. So what I'm doing now is I'm making a selection on the inside of her hair, let's say, and I'm just going to finish my selection. And if you're not familiar with the pen tool, I just made a tutorial and that tutorial shows the easiest way to use the pen tool. The way I'd use it right now is a little more advanced because I'm using these handles to uh, shape my pen curve, but both actually work. And we're going to close the curve. All right. So let me zoom out by pressing command zero. And there we've got our curve. So what I can do right now is go to uh, the mask icon and hit mask. And now we masked out the girl and our mask is actually a curve mask. So we can just go back into our curve and adjust, uh, uh, adjust our mask from there. Now, what I want to do is I want to uh, create a duplicate of this girl. So I'm going to press command J and um, I want to use the, the bottom layer for my new mask. So I'm just going to remove this mask right now. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit and maybe we can try to get her hair and that kind of stuff a little better. So now I'm just going to grab my um, selection brush tool by pressing W. I'm going to increase the brush size a whole lot. And now we're just going to tackle her hair. So I'm just going to make a nice selection around her face and around her hair. And that's basically all I want. So the rest we've already selected in our other selection, basically. And now I'm going to hit refine and we're just going to figure out if it's actually going to work with Affinity Photo. Um, yeah, I don't expect it to do a very good job, honestly, because it is quite a difficult background, I would say. So I think it's not going to look too good, but we can actually fix this or make her hair look better with some um, brush work later on. And that is also another use case of, yeah, having a graphic tablet or a pen tablet. It just makes things a whole lot easier, especially, especially the brushwork. All right, let's actually change our overview to see what we've got. And let's change it to white. And it isn't too bad, honestly. 
Um, but you can see we've got these textures and we've got this weird things going on. Something I don't really like, but let's just hit apply for now and let's hit mask. And press command D. And now once I zoom out, or actually I can show you from close. You can see that we've got the hair texture back. So now we've combined two um, selecting techniques. The first one was just the outline and you can see it is a very, very sharp cutout, but it's a good cutout because I did it with the pen tool. And with my second layer that I put below, I actually masked out the hair. So this is the, the before and the after. So you can actually combine selecting techniques to fine tune um, hair. But anyways, what we could do instead of just messing around with another mask, which is something I just wanted to show you. What we could also do is just create another layer. So I'm gonna create a new pixel layer. We're gonna hide the bottom one for now because that one I don't really need. And what you can do is go to any hair brushes basically, and I will release these soon, but I've got a few hair brushes right there. I'm just gonna grab any of these and I'm gonna zoom in a whole lot and let's see what this does. So I wanna have pen pressure turned on and now I can just draw back her hair basically and you want to make sure that you get the, the right color and we can sample colors from here so I hold alt or command uh, sorry alt or option and like this you can just brush back hair which is a very cool technique well this is going to take a long time obviously but that is the beauty of uh, working with brushes and working with hair it is all about the process so you can just, yeah, brush in as long as you want and make it look as good as you want by using different kinds of hair brushes. So this one is a little bit too big, so I'm just going to decrease the size a little bit. And I'm just going to brush in some hair strains. Maybe a little bit like to the outside. And this is just, yeah, it is very, very hard to do this with, with without the graphic tablet. So. I will show you in a bit what this will actually look like. Um, I'm now using one color only, so ideally you would sample many colors because obviously hair doesn't have just one color. It has many, many colors and you just want to sample her hair and then brush again and sample her hair. Maybe here it gets a little browner as you can see or a little lighter maybe is the right word. And like this you can just recreate hair like a boss and look at this like i can show you the before this is the before and this is the after and it just suddenly looks like real hair and it is just really fun to do this because the result is very easy or it just takes it takes me like three minutes five minutes maybe and the result is just like amazing and so i've got different brushes in this bundle that i've created and as mentioned i'll put them available at some point but the brush bundle isn't ready yet. I will re soon release some fur brushes and feather brushes, which were highly requested by uh, my members of my new school community. And if you haven't joined yet, I definitely recommend you to join because it is such great vibes in there. Feel very, very free to join. Yeah, let me just finish this up and then I'll get back to you. But yeah, obviously we can still change the background, but that is not really the purpose of this tutorial. I just wanted to show you what I would do with this pen tablet and how I would actually use it. And yeah, this is probably one of the best examples that I could give, just drawing in hairs. And look at this hair. It looks, well, not perfect, obviously, because I have done this like in five minutes or maybe even less, but it just looks, yeah, it looks amazing. So if you're interested in getting the Canvas 13 or any other Huion pen tablet, then use my link down below. It is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small commission at no extra cost for you. And also, if you want to learn more and connect with amazing creative Affinity Photo users from all around the world, make sure to join my free school community down below. You will absolutely love it and it's just a great place to hang out. Now, thank you so much Huion for sending this tablet out to me and I hope to see you inside of the school community. See you in the next video.